Hi folks, welcome to the Garden Canvas. Today we've got a snowy day in the south, which is very unusual for our area uh, in Zone 8A in North Carolina. But we're going to be talking about something called winter sowing. And I've done other videos on winter sowing, so I encourage you to check those out. I'll link those in the description. But today we're going to be looking at winter sowing purple cone flower, and I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process from beginning to end, even through seeing the plants transplanted into the landscape. So stay tuned. Okay, so here are the advantages to winter sowing. First, let's define what winter sowing is. We're not talking about just sowing seeds on the ground in the wintertime. We're actually talking about sowing seeds in a container, uh, such as a translucent container like this, a milk jug cut in half, which is what we'll be using today. Also something like a salad container, just a disposable container that we're going to fill with soil and then we're going to place our seeds in that and then close the container and set it outside and forget it through the winter. We're going to allow the elements like the moisture, the snow from the winter time to allow these seeds to, to germinate when they're ready when the spring comes around. This container forms something like a little mini greenhouse effect. So it protects the seeds from birds, from predators, it protects the seeds from the elements, and it protects the young seedlings as they germinate from, from predators as well. Rabbits, deer, and, and other animals and creatures that might eat our seedlings. Then when the spring comes around and the, the temperatures warm up and we're past the threat of frost in our area, we're gonna transplant these seedlings into the ground. And so you're gonna see that today. So first I'm going to show you how we're going to winter sow using containers. I'm going to be using a milk jug today. I've already cut the milk jug in half and I've left a hinge on the back here so that in the springtime we can open these up and allow our seedlings to get some air and not get too hot. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some slices in the bottom because it's important. We don't need a cap on our container so we're going to throw that away but we do need drainage because we're going to allow moisture from rain and snow to enter this to keep the seedlings moist but we do need drainage because we don't want this container filling with water so i have a utility knife here and i'm going to just cut some slits in the bottom of the container about a half an inch wide and this is going to allow moisture to seep out of the container and not collect in the bottom Go ahead and fill this with potting soil down in the bottom of the container. We want to fill about three to four inches. And we want to make sure that the soil is nice and moist. And I've pre moistened this, but I'm going to add some more moisture to it with a spray bottle. We want condensation to build in the container. Now I have some purple coneflower seeds that I collected. Uh, from some coneflower in my garden and I'm just going to go ahead and place these inside this container. See what these seeds look like. I'm going to place a couple of seeds per hole and you can make a little divot with your finger if you like that you can rest the seeds into. Now I'm just going to lightly cover these. I'm going to make sure they're making good contact with the soil. And I'm going to lightly cover these seeds. Uh, cone flowers really don't need to be planted more than about an eighth to a quarter inch deep. And even if they're surface sown, you're going to get some germination from that as well. But I'm just going to lightly sprinkle some dirt across the top of these. And then I'm going to take my spray bottle and I'm going to wet that really well. And the reason I'm using a spray bottle is because you, if you use something that's more forceful, you may disturb where you've placed the seeds in the soil. And so this keeps that from happening because it's a gentle water spray. 
So now that I have the seed sewn, I'm going to tape this container up with some duct tape, and that's going to be the best tape for uh, all weather. And so I'm just going to tape this around the edge of the container. And I'm going to do that on all sides until I've got the container completely covered and completely sealed. And then remember, I have my drainage holes in the bottom, so that's going to allow water to drain through the container uh, throughout the winter and keep the soil from getting overfilled with water. Now, there are other containers that you can use. Uh, again, you can use things like salad containers, um, takeout containers from your restaurant. Just make sure they're clean and you've washed those. And now I've cut drainage holes in the lid so that it allows water to get inside. And I've also cut drainage slits in the bottom of this container also. So that way I can allow water to get through and then also water to escape. One other way that you can do this is you can use a one gallon or even smaller nursery pot uh, with, you can use a disposable uh, shower cap like this, or you can use uh, cellophane plastic on top as long as it's clear and you can cut drainage holes in the top of your plastic and just fill it about halfway and then tape the cellophane. Just make sure you have some holes punched in the top so that moisture can get inside and keep the soil moist. If you do that, you're going to want to use something like a plant tag so that you can write what you've got sewn in that pot and just stick that inside the soil before you put your shower cap on top of the, the pot. Now I'm going to go ahead and label this because I've got many seeds sewn and I'm going to use a permanent marker or a paint pen. I find that paint pens work the best because they will withstand the weather. The paint pens will withstand the weather but permanent markers will wash off. Now you may be asking how in the world can these seedlings stay safe uh, in cold weather, especially snowed. I'm going to show you my containers that I made back in December and how they look right now in the middle of a snowstorm. So last night it got down to around 24 degrees. Tonight it's supposed to get down into the teens. And these are seedlings that I've sown from uh, the winter solstice period, which is the earliest date that you can really winter sow. And I uh, started sowing on December the 21st and I've sown additional containers ever since. So this is what they look like right now. Not a lot going on at the moment, but you can see snow on the inside. I've got various things planted here, a lot of perennials, a lot of native plants, native perennials, and I do have some edibles as well. And this is actually a container I've used. This is another way you can do this, it's using a storage tub. And I have a container here with lettuce, and you can see I already have seedlings with snow on the top. <laughs> so. Hopefully that will show you that this is very, very possible for you to do and be successful at it. So that is basically how you do a winter sown container. And now I'm going to show you how these transplant once the seedlings have grown out in the container in the spring. So stay tuned.